I guess I shouldn't be surprised that I got quite a few responses to my last video about the topic of antenatalism. After all, it seems to be a topic that is fraught with an awful lot of emotion for an awful lot of people, especially those who call themselves antenatalists, seem to be quite emotionally charged about this topic. Plus, there does seem to be a bit of a cult mentality going, around, going on around this topic. Having said that though, I was still a bit surprised to see that not everybody in the antenatalist camp, not everybody who decides to call themselves antenatalist, is necessarily that fundamentalist in their position. Not everybody is leaning towards the effortless nonsense that somebody like Gary, for example, is embracing. There are some people who do embrace, who do suggest a less extreme form of a policy or ideology or whatever you want to call it, of something that they still decide to call antenatalism. What I do find a little bit confusing is at what point do you stop calling it antenatalism? I had a very interesting conversation, and I must thank you for that, wicked jargon, um, with one person who called themselves antenatalist, wicked jargon, and um, again, thank you. And this person apparently still calls themselves antenatalist. However, they don't seem to be embracing the position that they should be we should avoid further childbirth, which, considering the word antenatalism and where it came from, seems to be pretty much the basic definition of what antenatalism is. Stopping births in order to solve a problem, suffering. But they seem to be under the impression that any position that leads to a reduction in the human population is antenatalist. Now I can sort of see where they're coming from. You might think that first of all, let's first of all lay, lay down the, the basic agreements that we can, the things that we can agree on and one of those things is that we are threatening to overpopulate the Earth. Some people would even argue that we have already overpopulated the Earth and we are already a problem here. But on the other hand, um, there are different ways of dealing it. Now the extreme antenatalist position would be to just engage in some voluntary extinction movement for the human race, but lesser extreme antenatalist movements apparently, according to some people, simply propose that we would allow the human population to be reduced, to come down to saner, more sustainable levels. Now, I can agree with that, but simply stopping childbirth is not going to achieve that. And let me explain this by doing the maths for you. Let me explain this by doing the maths for you. You see, let's first of all take the approach that we're just simply going to stop childbirth until the population has reached a reasonable level. You see, there's a problem with that. At the moment, the death rate for the 7 billion people that live on this planet right now is about 2 a second. 2 people die every second. Now, if we take a very simple calculation, we could extrapolate that and say okay that means about 60 million people die every year and in order to bring the 7 billion that are alive today down to say 3 billion that would take us almost 67 years. However that might be a slightly simplistic calculation because after all all these people are getting older and the death rate is likely to increase over time. So let's look at other statistics. Let's, for example, look at the human population as it was 67 years ago. Now that would bring us to 1945. I looked it up. I couldn't find figures for 1945. The closest human population figures I could find were of 1950, at which point there were 2.5 billion people alive. Now, 
1955, five years later, there were 2.8 billion people. So I do think it's quite reasonable to extrapolate that back to 1945 and assume that around 1945 there would be approximately two and a quarter billion people on this planet. That is a reasonable figure to assume. Now all those people who were alive in 1945 are now 67 years or older. So if we look at the population, the, the distribution of the population today, and we look at the over 65s, roughly, you know, there are 500 million of those. So roughly speaking, if we look at the population of 1945 and who is still alive of those people today, we can see that about one in four or one in five people of those people are still alive today. Now that would be a gross underestimate if we were to apply that to the population today. So of the seven billion people today, if we assume that only a quarter of them would still be alive in 67 years time, that would be about one, say one and a half. I'm being very generous here towards the antenatalists, to be honest. One and a half billion people would still be alive 67 years from now. That is the lowest possible reasonable estimate because after all the life expectancy in 1945 was nowhere near what it is today. So one and a half people, one and a half billion people would still be alive in 67 years from now. They're all geriatrics. All of them. Because remember we stopped human reproduction today so anybody who is still alive in 67 years time is 67 years old or older. They're all geriatrics. These people need to sustain a human population. First of all they're all beyond reproductive age. So if we did that humanity would inevitably die out. But also they're all pensioners. So none of them can carry the weight of an economy anymore. That's, you know, there might be the odd one here or there who could still perform some work, but by and large all of them are pensioners. They're too old to work. And from that realization alone, we need to realize that we need to keep a certain level of reproduction going. So that at all points in the future, there will be people alive who are young, fit and vigorous enough to carry an economy, to keep on producing our level of affluence, who can provide what needs to be provided in order to take care of the sick, the feeble and the elderly, and so on and so forth. So all of that needs to be taken into account. And what sort of level of reproduction is required for that? Well, look at, for example, say there is a million people born every year. Well, 67 million people, in order to sustain an economy that carries one and a half billion people at least, is not enough. What is enough? I don't know. But certainly not something as small as 67 million people. So we need at least a million people being born a day, uh, a year. Two million, three, how many? I would say anything less than 30 million, about half the current death rate of 60, billion, 60 million a year, is not enough. Now please explain to me how a policy, even though it's aiming towards an overall reduction of the number of people in the world and aiming for say 30 million births a year when you know that 60 million people will die a year will bring the population down very very gradually but how a policy that could that aims towards at least creating 30 million new people every year could in any way be called antinatalist so any reasonable policy, even a reasonable policy that is aimed towards actually bringing down the human population, cannot be called antinatalist. 
And that is why antinatalism does need to be rejected out of hand. It is, as I said before, about the extreme forms of antinatalism, but even the milder forms of antinatalism are unreasonable, unworkable, cannot result in a net reduction of suffering for real people who actually exist today and into the future. That is the absurdity of the antinatalist position. However, there is one group of people to whom an antinatalist policy would actually be beneficial. And that is those who are over 50. Think about it for a moment. You are over 50 already. You are in the last bit of your life. If today we stopped human reproduction, then that would be of benefit to you. Because all these young people who would now be ready to put an awful lot of time and energy into raising their families would instead be able now to pour all that energy for the next 30 years, their working lives, into sustaining the aging population. You, the geriatrics, or the soon-to-be geriatrics, would have a field day, would be happy in this world in which the population, those who came after you, those who are 10, 20, 30 years younger than you, need to work harder and harder and harder to sustain you until of course the time comes that you die after which you couldn't care less anymore. So antinatalism is a very good policy if you're over 50 and you don't give it a